they was all sad. And just like when we have somebody to leave us, we can be sad too. Mm -hmm. And he told them in, in a head that what he was going to do. And so they was all sad and they didn't know what they was going to do. And he was telling them that he was going to leave them a comfort. And the comfort is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to read you the verses. Then I'm going to try to explain it the best of my ability with the Lord here. Yeah. I'm going to do it as you can, James. Verse, we come to verse 15. We already know that, you know, what the word is. And a lot of people don't realize that God is all three of us wrapped up in the world. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we cannot separate them. Some people may try to, but it doesn't work that way. Okay, we're going to start with verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. <clears throat> Verse 16 says, I will pray in the Father. He shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Verse 17, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. Verse 18 says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you, yet a little while the world see me no more. But you see me because I live, I shall also live. You live, I shall also live. Verse 20 said, at that day, you shall know that I am in my father, my father in me. He that has my commandment and keep them. He is, it is he that loves me. He that loves me shall be loved by the father. And I love him and will manifest him. Verse 22, Jesus <coughs> said unto him, not Judah is the call, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto me and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my commandments. And the Father will love him, and I will come unto him and make him a boy with him. He that loves me not, keeps not my faith, and the word which he here is not man, but the Father who sent him. The first, number one, says, uh, if we love God, we're going to keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we know what the word says and what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So if you love God, you're going to keep his commandments. Right. And so, it, so the word of peace, the disciples thought Jesus was abandoned them. But Jesus never abandoned anybody. Mm -hmm. Matthew 10 and 7 through the 8 said, we're talking about the Great Commission. You know, he was going to send them out after he did. They was in the upper room. That's when Jesus was telling them about everything that was going, was going to happen, was going to happen to him. But they couldn't grasp it. And we would be the same way if somebody tell us that they, they had been with us every day, teaching and preaching. And uh, how, how do you think people feel? You feel the same way. We'd be sad because they they were leaving us. But uh, he was going to leave them with a comforter, and the comfort is the Holy Spirit. And you know that he also gives us peace. It ain't nothing like the peace we have when we have with Jesus. Amen. We can be worried about anything, Amen. but all you got to do is talk to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's let you know peace is that's that's come over you. Uh, the aim of this lesson is to understand that Jesus promised. The disciple, the comforter, hold true to today for his followers. Jesus was going to depart, and he gave them persistent encouragement, you know, what to do. These include the provision for them and the uh, father house he promised to return. See, they, they could not understand, you know, why he was leaving them. He had been with them all that time, and they didn't understand it, not until the Holy Spirit came. That's in Acts 2. After, you know, Jesus ascended to heaven, that's when the Holy Spirit came to them and told them to go out into the world, you know, and, uh, you know, teach his word. Everything he had taught them. They didn't really understand it when he was teaching to them. So after he, after he went away, 
that's when it came all back to us. Sometimes I'm the same way. When I can get to reading and reading, it, it don't it don't comprehend. And if I study read it, you know, then I understand what what's saying. Then that'd be the Holy Spirit coming to right. you. Mm -hmm. right. And then uh, we got uh, the Comforter. We know the Comforter is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And we know that the Word says, He give us the Word and the Word says. And the Word also resurrects because we already talked about that. Mm -hmm. How he resurrect Lazarus from the dead? Mm -hmm. And Martha and, and uh, Mary, they didn't understand why did that happen and he loved mm -hmm. them so. Because Jesus do things in a way, you know, that we don't understand. Right? Not right now you don't, just like the disciples, they didn't understand, but later on, it, it was all going to come back to them. And then uh, he gave us the Holy Spirit to encourage us. Jesus told them that he would pray and the Father, he would send them a comforter. The comforter, that is the Holy Spirit. Who would be with them forever? He would not leave them. The comfort of the spirit and the truth would come to dwell with them. Jesus would not abandon or desert them, just like you don't abandon or, or desert us today. He will come to them, and he, if he is leaving them, how can he come back? They didn't even understand. You know, when he left, how was he going to come back? He's already leaving them. How was he going to come back? So if you don't understand, it would be hard for you, you know, to believe that. Because God, he can do anything. And there's nothing that he can't do. You know, he made a blind man see. He raised a man from the dead, had been dead three days, four days, and he came back alive. Can man do that? No, man cannot do that. Only God Because he got all power. Not some power. All power is in his hand. Okay, Jesus resurrected and he ascended to heaven. Okay, that was on the Pentecost. That was, and you find that in Acts, the second chapter. You know how Peter preached, and uh, he preached, you know, in the psalm, and they all these people got the Holy, Holy Ghost and were saved. That was, that was nobody who lived with Jesus. After he left the Holy Spirit, look at that. He the one did that. And then, then we come on and say, uh, Jesus continued. With love and obedience in relationship to the disciples. Their love for Jesus was revealed by his obedience to him and their love for one another. So that's what we're supposed to do today. We're supposed to love one another. We see our brother or somebody in need, we tell them to help them. We should all have compassion for one another, not just for certain people for right. one another. Right. And we come on, you know, you got to be obedient. To the wood. Anybody got anything to say? I do. Uh, at the very beginning, it said, "If you love my, if you love me, keep my commandments." You know, love is an action word. That's yeah. right. Anybody can say that they love you. Mm -hmm. right. you give lip service. You know, people they use it every day. Get them to say it. But um, if you truly love some people, you'll see some action behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, right. just like I was, um, I was sick this past week. So. So, and uh, I was amazed at how much love I got. My phone was just ringing off the hook. So many people calling, can I bring you something? Can I do you something? That's when I really felt love. Mm -hmm. When I saw some of the people I thought wouldn't even really just be concerned about me, but they were steady calling and checking on me. Mm -hmm. So if we love Jesus and if we love God, if we truly love God, then there should be some action behind it. We should mm -hmm. be able to see it in our actions. Mm -hmm. and we care ourselves. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because, you know, work, like you said, love is an action word. You can sit, sit up and say, I love you all day, but you don't show no good love. I know you love it. Mm -hmm. You can just be lip service, just like you said. So you have to show love. You have to, you know, it, it is an action word. Okay, and then we got Jesus from a peace to the believers. And we, are, we all should be believers of Christ. Because we got the evidence, you know, to see what all he has done for us. Jesus warned in advance that, that we will suffer. Mm -hmm. If we follow him, he taught us when he was with disciples in flesh. He could not easily keep them from stumbling because he could physically stand between the persecutor 
and the disciples at the time of the virgin physical attack. He would follow on them. After he was uh, crucified, the attack would follow on Jesus, followed by his physical representative, which is the Holy Spirit. Jesus revealed much about himself and his mission. He revealed even more as his death and departure. The Holy Spirit and Jesus was sin and revealed his death. The Holy Spirit is something like a, you know, a training at law when we need. All right. It's always there when we need. All right. So, those who follow Jesus and his disciple, the Holy Spirit, it, it can be a prosecutor attorney also. Mm -hmm. To the world of those who, who follow the rules of the world. The world is the world is wrong about sin, righteousness, and uh, you know, judgment. The Lord gives us peace, yes. but the world gives peace also. But God peace is not like the world peace. Mm -hmm. The world gives peace, you know, for just a little yeah. while, mm -hmm. then it's gone. But when God gives you peace, it's everlasting. Mm -hmm. right. And He promised peace to all of the, the believers. So we should some we should accept and obey God. It's necessary to receive the Holy Spirit ministry between us. Peace, the Holy Spirit helps us to uh, understand and call God's word to his teaching. Because the disciples, they didn't they didn't understand, really understand, you know, what was happening to after Jesus, you know, went out. Mm -hmm. It's just like something that you read. You can read something and you might not understand it. Yeah. You go back, then it's come to you, you know, what, what the meaning of it. And that's where the disciples were. They didn't understand, you know. Jesus had been with them all that time. They ate, they slept together, they did all that together. Mm -hmm. But the people didn't understand, you know, what was happening to them. And I would be the same way, be willing, you know, somebody been with me all this time. Especially, you know, he had opened up their understanding. Mm -hmm. They really didn't know what was going, what was going on. But, that's why he sent the Holy Spirit. A lot of people can't grasp by the Holy Spirit. Say, for mm -hmm. instance, I'm not picking on no denomination like the Jehovah's Witnesses. They don't say anything about, you know, they just they just said Jehovah. We know Jehovah is God because that is his given name. But he also God the Father, God the Son, mm -hmm. God the Holy Spirit. It all wrapped up in one person. But mm -hmm. a lot of people, a lot of people can't grasp that. The Holy Spirit, when God left, you know, He left it with the disciples. It also with us today. The Holy Spirit. It will help you in whatever you need. Do anybody have anything else to say? Uh, I have two things. Uh, number one, you know, people are always dying from the time we get into the world, but there's a close people in my life have taught me one thing. Uh, death will teach you some lessons that not that life never could. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so even in this situation with the disciples, um, even though uh, Jesus was resurrected and placed back with his father, um, there were some things that they could not grasp, they could not understand until Jesus moved on back to heaven. And it's that way with us today. Uh, our parents, our grandparents, our mentors, they teach us so much but the lesson is really grass once they leave and you've got to go back and lean on that understanding. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are things that my mother especially tried to show me, tried to tell me, and it wasn't that I was being a disobedient child. It just, I didn't have that understanding because I could always fall right back on her. I didn't have to lean on what she taught me as hard because she was still here. But now that she's gone, those situations have arisen and I had to go back to what she was trying to show me, trying to tell me. And that is a comfort. It's a comfort to know that, you know, I have that knowledge. I have that faith. I have that wisdom now. And the second thing is that uh, with our Christian walk, there's a difference between happiness and joy. And happiness is like you said, temporary, you know, I could be really happy that, you know, it's not raining anymore, but then I could be just as unhappy if I'm standing out there and it pours down on me. So we really have to get into what is the difference between happiness and joy. And joy can be like that thing 
at your house, you know, sometimes we have like some pictures or whatever on our table. And, you know, you'll forget about it. They get covered up by the bills. They get covered up by receipts and stuff like that. But when you go back to it, you still feel that same joy when you look at that picture. So the Holy Spirit as a comforter is the agent of joy. It is the keeper of joy. As humans, we have to be reminded and we have to be comforted. Some people call it being petted, but I say that God keeps that around to, you know, keep our joy fresh. Because if anything sets up long enough, it's going to be rank, it's going to be stinking, it's going to be, you know, it's not, not going to be any good, especially like if there's some water sitting outside your house and, you know, like that. So that Holy Spirit, as an agent of joy, it comforts us, it keeps us fresh, and it keeps us useful in the body of Christ. Yeah. 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 Does anybody else have anything to say? Ask her what you like to have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll, I'll get mine. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm almost at the end. She told me last week she don't, she don't, she don't stay on there. I don't stay there. Okay. <laughs> okay. We know God said that, you know, the comfort of which is the Holy Spirit. And I need to stuff. And all we got to do is obey Him. Like this Bishop always said, obey God, obey Him. I didn't even put it. You said, uh, obey God and leave the door. All the consequences. That's right. So that's all we got to do. Mm -hmm. Obey God and leave the door. So that's, that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Ask him. laughs> she, she was serious. She told me last week that she, 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 she doesn't stay long when she's up there. But um, another, another good lesson. And, and I just want to encourage you to, to cultivate and foster your relationship with the Holy Spirit. That's right. Uh, yeah. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's, it's, it's nothing to, um, that we shouldn't want to, to do. And, and oftentimes, I think that um, sometimes our denomination doesn't do a good, hasn't done a good job. I think that we we've left the, the Holy Ghost talk to Pentecostal mm -hmm. Church of God and Christ. But they're not the only ones with the Holy Ghost. And so we have to uh, just continue to teach that and, uh, and understand that the Holy Ghost has been assigned to do certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, I was listening to Sister Tammy, and a lot of those things that we are taught, one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to bring back to remembrance. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I know it's a lot of things that early on that I had no idea that the Holy Ghost was going to bring those things back mm -hmm. to me so they could be useful in my life. So we just have to foster that relationship. Don't be afraid of it. Uh, encourage our, and I think we got to do, especially now, a better job of teaching our children and youth about that gift of having the Holy Spirit on the inside. And sometimes it's trial and error. Uh, I hadn't always been perfect in hearing that voice and understanding that voice, but the more I've tried, the more I wanted to, uh, the more I've grown and being able to know this is, this is not a spirit of anything else, it's the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. and, and one thing about the Holy Spirit is it's never going to go away from God's word. That's, right. that's why knowing his word is so important. So therefore, if, if a spirit of I'm hearing something and it doesn't line up with the word, that's not the spirit of God. Because God's spirit is mm -hmm. never going to stray us away from what his word says. So that's something that we just got to continue to do and just teach and push and I believe the earlier we get it, the better right. off we'll be. There, there's some stuff, uh, Brother Atlanta, I wouldn't have gotten into if I had listened to the <laughs> I had listened to the Holy Ghost, but I didn't know. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, so when you know better, you do better. So we just gotta start mm -hmm. teaching as early as possible, getting our kids and even adults to understand the Holy Spirit is real. Not about you running around the church. That's fine. Yeah. I, I I'll run every now and then, I jump and I'll shout. But the Holy Ghost was not given to us to make us shout. It was given to us to help us live right. That's and right. To live for God. Right. So those are things that we have to have to really just be able to push and, and understand when it comes to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Very yeah. good. Appreciate yeah. that word. Uh, at this time, uh, Brother Blesso, could you start taking our offering? Do we have any other questions or comments at this time? Any other questions or comments at this time? Uh, it's just, um, I was thinking about the conversation we had, you and I had last night about how 
the Holy Spirit will show up in situations. And because it's those things that are like, hey, but God, you know, you know, it was nothing that you did. You know, it was nothing on earth that happened in that moment. Uh, and I was telling my husband about an incident I had when I used to work at Stark Hill High School. And before they did their reconstruction, they had a blind hallway that uh, no cameras. And if you got around there, people didn't know what was going on. And so I was moving between classes and there was a big fight that was about to break out. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. It was about to go down. And I was the only adult on that hall. And these guys are bigger than me. They were gang members, some of them. Some of them were athletes. There was nothing I could do if anything had popped off. And I just stood there and took a deep breath and started screaming, go to class, go to class. That's all I had. I mean, I had no radio. There was nobody to come help me, back me up. I just started screaming, go to class, go to class. And all of a sudden, people start going to class. I mean, they had put down backpacks. They had taken out shirts. It was going to be rough over there. We might have been on the news. But I know, as crazy as that may sound, once it was over with, I felt good. I felt all right because I know God had stepped in with the Holy Ghost and handled that thing. Because I'm just saying, there's like 30 or 40 kids there. I couldn't have done a thing. All of them were bigger than me, the ones that were going to throw down. So we feel like God has to show up in the middle of a car wreck. Or the Holy Spirit have to come when somebody died or uh, when we're about to lose our house. He keeps us day by day. And I'm just saying, ain't no telling what could have gone on worse. You know, that could have been bad publicity for the school. There could have been some people really hurt. So if when, if when you're going through life, you start recognizing that God can send the Holy Ghost in any moment. Because there are small things, examples in the Bible, small things that lead to big consequences. And so it helps you stay in line with your faith if you know your faith can be tested and approved anywhere. Good. Amen. Amen. I, I just want to push this a little bit further that because we have it in us, it's all in it. Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Spirit is already there. Yeah. Yeah. Already there. It is. Uh, I mean, man, I'm starting to get happy. <laughs> all right, I mean, the Holy Spirit is all <laughs> already there. Always. And, and, and we keep saying it. Sometimes we have to get away from looking for a feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you have to rely on the house. Holy Spirit, even when you don't feel. Right. You got that right. Because the Holy Spirit is not about a feeling, it's about trust. Right. That I, have this, I, I know I got the Spirit of God in me. Mm -hmm. I may not feel it, I may not run, I may not jump, but I know for a certainty, bless and assure, bless and assure. Jesus yes. is mine. Yes. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I know I got the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in me. And so when you know that you know that you know that you know, you're more likely to lean on that. There you go. Mm -hmm. But if you're always waiting on a feeling, you may miss it sometimes. I mean, sometimes I'm, I don't tell nobody. Sometimes I don't feel like coming to church. I don't, don't tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Fast they both say that, but sometimes I don't feel like. Be real. Sometimes that bed and just the house or mm -hmm. comfort or, but because I have something on the inside. Mm -hmm. But don't go say I got something on the inside. I keep telling me to go up, mm -hmm. to go ahead. Mm -hmm. But you have to learn to listen to them mm -hmm. and identify that mm -hmm. because often, like the same say, we we can miss it. Because I don't have goosebumps. Mm -hmm. Tears not coming down my cheek. No, it's not about that. It's good if that comes. Mm -hmm. But you have to move by it. Oh, I'm going to talk about it today. I don't get into it. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. But it's, it's faith. 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 And faith, a feeling doesn't always come with faith. Mm -hmm. And I, I, one thing I teach is this. Sometimes you got to do it till you feel it. There you go. You got to do it till you And the Holy Ghost will push you. And that's doing the call, but but just know that you got it, and God didn't have to send it because He's already breathed it into us. So whatever wherever we are, God guess what? Is. God is, and so we just have to trust that and believe that and walk in that. Amen. Easier said than done.
but that's what we have to do. Amen. 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 Okay. Anybody else have any comments? Just left this morning. I want you to take it back home. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If none, we'll close out in prayer. If y'all will join me in prayer. Father God, this morning we come to you thanking you, Father God. Thank you, thank thank you, you for God. being thank a God you. and being God all by yourself. Yes. Thank you for being the one and only true living God, Father thank God. You, sir. Thanking you for this Sunday school lesson this morning, Father God. Thanking you for allowing us to expound on you, Father. Expound on the Holy Spirit, Father. Father, we ask that your word fall on fertile ground, Father God, and help strengthen our faith in you, Father God. Help make our walk with you a little bit closer, Father God. We ask that you build us up where we're weak, Father yeah. God, because yeah. there are many weak places within us, Father God. Mm -hmm. We ask that you strengthen us, Father God, and make us stand bold and proclaim your word, Father God. Help us to do the great commission and make disciples, Father God. Father God, help us remind you that the true reason we're here is for you, Father God. It's for your glory, Father God. It's not to lift us up, but to lift you up, Father God. Mm -hmm. We ask that you be with us through this worship service, Father God. Yes. Let it be what you would have it to be, yes. Father God. We ask that, Father God, mm -hmm. that you just continue to strengthen us and be with us throughout this day, yes. Father yes. God. Not yes. just this day, just continue on, Father God, because you will continue on, God. We ask all these blessings in your darling son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.